you know, I, uh, I'll be honest with you guys. Recently, the last, probably in about the past month or so, I haven't really felt the same about church anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong at all. I love the church. Well, I, let's put it like this. I love going to church. I love talking to people in church about different things. I love getting involved and serving God in the church. I do. The thing that bothers me more than anything in the church is this thing that's supposed to be part of the church, but to me it's not as strong in the church as I thought it would, being a man. It's called fellowship. Fellowship is strong among women, but it's not that strong among men. I've noticed that. We had a uh, ministry that recently went to the, uh, to the game, right, to go see the Wizards about a month ago. And we ran to a few of the members, uh, my son and I did, and most of them kind of stayed to themselves. We all sat in the same section, matter of fact. No one really said much to anybody. No. Even when we had the uh, the buffet before the game, no one said much to anybody. You know, it was just get together and that's it. There's no real strong Fellowship among black men in the church anymore. I've noticed that. Now, it may not be the case in all churches, but there are churches like that. And I've seen it. And it it, it, it really does bother me, man. I, I, I think that's the one, one reason why there are not a lot of uh, strong male black roles in the church today because of the lack of fellowship. We talk the game, but we really don't back it up, you know. But I got a lot about that and a lot of other things to say. This is probably one of the first uh, live podcasts I'm doing on Spreaker, and I'll probably do another one on YouTube later on, another live one for YouTube specifically in Hangouts and Blog Talk Radio because this is something... I felt about for a long time. Even when I went to church back in the 1980s, I felt the same way. You know, but a little bit different story in the 80s, though, than it was. It's because at least uh, I was more involved, but that came, that criticism about me being in church came from a family member. You know, and I do plan on talking. Well, I, I did actually, I did talk about that in a lot of podcasts recently. I, I'm sorry. That part I did, but I'm going to talk more about it because. I want this message to get out to the black church specifically to let them know this is the reason why a lot of your own people don't go to church. It's not that many, many of them don't want to be there. In some cases, that might be true. They just probably, some of them just don't want to go at all anyway. I'm one of those that want to be there and want to be involved in the church. But when I see there's a pattern of something where I'm not feeling anymore, maybe something in the church is lacking. One thing I do know, fellowship, the one thing that they do preach about in church is one of the things. This is DJ Wolf Live talking about the lack of fellowship in the church. Let's get started, shall we? Alright guys, this is DJ Wolf Live, right here in the Southern Maryland Studio Live. Right here is around about 8.45, and it's time to get underway. Alright, well, as you tell us Sunday morning, I'm not in church. I got little things I got to do today, a couple of honeydews, and my honey wants me to get taken care of. Second Sunday in a row. I'm supposed to be back in third Sunday, so I, I mean, uh, not the third Sunday, next Sunday, I'm supposed to be, and I'm actually doubting about that. Um, I have some of my reasons for not wanting to uh, 
be involved in church right now. I talked about it in a uh, podcast uh, last Sunday night in detail. But I want to extend this talk about it. Because I've been seeing more and more stories on YouTube. I've seen some recent posts from a couple of other YouTubers that I follow talking about the same subject. You know. And I can completely understand. There are reasons why black men don't go to church like they used to. Don't follow like they used to. Um, I don't mind telling the story again, but beside the fact that my dad didn't want me to uh, really get get that involved in singing the choir, really, I think he didn't want me involved in church at all at that the time. But he definitely wanted me to sing the choir. With him. I'm like, well, are you saying that you didn't want me to sing the choir? Or you just didn't want me to be involved in church. So, in any case, I was doing not only just singing the choir, but I was involved in deaconship. I was involved in dream, as a dream deacon. I was involved in um, teaching Sunday school, which I, I, I ain't lie. Of all the things I did in church, and this is not a lie, my mother can attest to this. The Sunday school teaching for me to teach Sunday school every Sunday, or at least as an assistant, was one of my favorite things in church as a teenager. I kid you not. I loved it. I loved every, every minute of it. I honest to God did it. I loved it. Um, I had no problems, you know, with that. I enjoyed it immensely. I really did. I truly did. And somehow or another, after about five years or so, really prior to that, my dad was like, ah, you don't need me singing the choir, blah, 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 so sissy, all that. You know, he basically discouraged me from even getting involved in the church at that point. And then eventually, after I told the pastor, and they came in a couple times, I just, I just stopped going. You know? It made me feel some kind of way. To the point, I was like, I just don't want to bother. You know? Like I said, again, fast forward here to 2018. And... I was singing the two choirs. I was involved helping with, out with Sunday school. I wasn't a deacon, but I was asked to uh, see about becoming one one time a couple years ago. And I did usher it a couple of times, but now it's just like, I'm not feeling it. The last month and a half, two months, fellowship to me is just Something that doesn't matter in the black church anymore. At least not if you're an African American male. Male age. And you haven't been involved in the church as much as or as often as your wife has. See, that's the other thing. I had a comment one time where uh a church member told me, Well, if you was half of if you you doing as half as good as your wife. She, this, excuse my French, this bitch was a, is a member, was a member. I don't remember who it was, but when they said that to me, it made me, it's like they was kind of like down at me. How could you sit there and say, if you are as good as, uh, 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 you know, you're judging me before I even get a chance to do my thing. You already prejudging me. And this is more than no, one of the reasons I stopped going initially. Because of mess like that. That woman sat there and said, well, if you are half as good as your wife, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So you already doubt me before I got a chance to prove my damn self. You know? And that's why I don't totally blame people for not wanting to go to church. Because to church people who you think would be the standard bearers of uh, morally... Right, not only morally right, but morally morally respectable to you as a person or the last people to do that. Basically, what I'm saying, church is like anywhere else. You know, if I want to hear all that mess, I go to work. You know, and on some respects, I'm starting to believe it's more of a scam. Just yesterday, I was, uh, I'm going back out to the day because I'm going to find out this guy, this, um, 
there was his pastor. Well, he said he was a pastor. He didn't say what church he was from. Just yesterday, I was at this uh, big festival. I, uh, I, hear, um, I'm, I hear Bowie, matter of fact, today. Uh, it was on yesterday, going on today. Big, 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 uh, I guess like on the food fest. And they got way out here, so I'm just going to go out there. You know, I'm going to scope the landscape but anyway. But, <laughs> but he stopped me, and he was talking about, you know, do you go to church? And I said, yeah, I go to church. And he asked me the name of my church. So I told him the name, but this is the weird part. I just I thought about that. I knew I saw it when he did it. He had on the earpiece on his right ear. So he bent down on his right side. Why wouldn't you bend on your left side to hear what I'm talking about? You bend on the right side so whoever it is that's on the other end, especially if the phone's active with the earpiece on, here's what I'm saying. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get information. Now, I think what he was trying to do was get information about not only the name of the church, but he was trying to get information about maybe if there are churches like that, like the one I, I, that, uh, that, that I, I, I or somebody else might be going to, because he's probably looking to either attend, join, or be involved with the church. You know, I think what I call it uh, as a street pastor scam, which it probably is. I thought about that. But that's just part of what I'm talking about. The thing of it is, when men aren't felt welcome at churches, especially by the pastor, and they tend nowadays to involve themselves with the leadership or the emerging building of leadership in black women. I've seen that. Uh, I had a pastor tell me one time, this is a true story. My pastor, matter of fact, I said, was on cruise several years ago. And he said, man, you know what? Ain't nothing like the women to build will and the women to be built up in the church. Boy, I tell you, they really, they be handling things over there. And he was proud of that. Yeah. He, he, he was more proud of the women who were building in the church than he was of the men. My thing over there is, you're a pastor and you're a man. You should want the men to build and lead in the church, uh, lead the church, and then the women come behind you. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it was in biblical times. We're going ass backwards now. And I noticed that. The men should be as just as welcome in the church as the women, but we're not. Even the ones who are there. I've heard women. Now, this is a true story. I have actually heard women criticize some of the men or the male members in the church. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I've heard them do it. I've seen them do it. One did it two weeks ago when I was up there. Sure did. And I seen someone criticize me. But they smile on my face. But they be all friendly with my wife. But me, I ain't like I ain't nobody. And I've been there six years. I've been there six years singing two choirs, involving about four or five other uh uh ministries in the church. Okay? Don't tell me I'm not involved. Don't tell me you don't know who the hell I am. Y'all know who I am. And that's part of the problem. That's part of the reason I don't want to get involved anymore. Because you don't show me the same love. I don't expect us to talk about the same thing. Of course, women are going to talk about different things with, with women than men are going to talk about different things about men about. The difference is the men don't show them the same respect in the churches women are. That's a known fact. I don't give a damn what anybody say. I've seen it too many times. You know? That's a fact. I don't feel part of it anymore. I don't. You know? My old lady stayed, stayed completely silent about it the last two weeks. Hadn't said much anything about it. She keep asking, why you ain't going? Why you ain't going? I'm just not going. That's tell her that. There's more to it than why I'm not going. But right now, as far as you need to know, I am just not going. Nope. I don't feel welcome yet. I felt the same way in, in the early 80s. But not as bad as I do now. Because I'm an adult now and I feel that way. You know? The difference was the 80s when I was going and getting involved. 
My dad was the one that made me feel like I shouldn't belong there. But yet, he didn't even feel I should belong anywhere else either. In 2018, I feel the church ain't feeling I'm, I ain't feeling that way that, about, about the church anymore because I don't feel they feel that way about me. At least not everybody do. You know? And thus, I don't want to be involved anymore. I mean, maybe it's me. I'm supposed to sing next week. But I don't even know if I want to do that. I'm already thinking about bailing out of that. You know? I just don't feel it anymore. I, you know, and I know it's, it, 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 you know, but it makes me depressed because I want to be involved, but I don't want to be involved and feeling like I, you know, that I, that I have no purpose there. And I've been putting in everything that I've been wanting to do in purpose of the church for the last six years. But I've heard people say, well, maybe you're not doing enough. Well, what the hell else you want me to do? You know, I'm not a deacon. I ain't ready to be no deacon yet. I've served in two choirs. I've done other ministries. Don't involve it in there, you know, doing other functions. What the hell else you want me to do? You know, what I gotta do? Uh, 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 take the, uh, theological, uh, logical uh, ministry studies and become a preacher. I guess you want me to do that too. I'm not a preacher. You know, I'm not a heathen. I'm, I'm still a heathen. You know, but that, that's neither here nor there. My thing is. That the black church, to me, and that's just me, and I think church in general, because I've actually, I just got finished watching a uh, video on YouTube about uh, this uh, church member who happened to be white in a white church, and he basically said the same thing that the white church are doing, uh, uh, he has issues with, like the black church are, they're all the same. He talked about some of the same stuff. And... One person in one kind of comments from one of the um, YouTube channels I, I, I saw even said what well, I've said, they said it best, better than I could say it, but they're right. That women in the church now are, are rude, they're arrogant, they're stuck up, they're nosy. They're, uh, what, that's another word for it, a caddy. Uh, it's a, a word we uh, describe how they throw shade, which is another word for caddy, which is what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, make snide comments towards you. Especially if you're a man, you're involved in, in, in functions with, with some women in the church. I've heard that. I've heard all of that. And that's like, to me, it, it's like, it, it's getting me upset. Because I had a comment like that of, of, about, about month, that two months ago, which is the reason why I stopped singing when the choirs. You know? Oh, you're not singing loud now. You got to sing with more bass. I don't, I'm, I, to be honest, I would love to sing like Barry White. I don't have a Barry White voice. If I had to draw you, it would hurt my voice. That's not how I talk. That's not that's not my voice. It doesn't make me less mad because I don't have it. That's just not my voice. You know. That's real talk. You know. And people tend, especially church, tend to vilify you. Because they feel if your voice ain't deep enough, you ain't man enough. That's the biggest bunch of bullshit. Excuse my French, but I, I'm starting not to care anymore. That's the biggest bunch of bullshit I've heard in my freaking life. Now you're going to tell me that? They never said it before. I was singing with, with another choir. You didn't say shit about that. And all of a sudden, I joined yours. Well, you don't have enough bass in your voice. Well, yeah, I wasn't born with bass in my voice. To be honest. So I'm not going to sing with it. I don't sing with it because that's not how my voice is registered. You know, for real. It's stupid. It's hypocritical. It's hypocritical and it's irresponsible to, to even do that. You make people feel less less about, about going to church. And that's what number one reason why a lot of people start, don't go at all. And I, to be honest, I can understand. I can fully understand. For real. You know? No one wants to make feel, you know, <clears throat> let's put it like this. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, because there's a couple reasons why I started going and why I started back going. I started going back to church in 2012. I wanted to feel a sense of belonging. Not only just a sense of belonging, I want to be a, a, feel a sense of being part of something that's meaningful. Not just to me, but the people in, in the community and the people around that I'm around. 
that we're doing something for the greater good. I also wanted to get my life back right again, which I have. I wanted to continue serving God. I wanted to continue reading and studying the Word of God. Okay? That's real talk. Those were among the reasons why I wanted to go back. And fellowship was the was another main reason. Because if I, I feel if I can get into the fellowship, I can get more into the word because we're all synced to try to understand and have better meaning of God in our lives. That was among that reason. But if I'm not feeling what y'all teaching and what y'all expressing here, then I don't know, know, know how I can get through it. That's why I stopped. That's why I stopped. One of the reasons I stopped going. I, I, I wasn't feeling it no more. I really wasn't. Really wasn't. Just wasn't feeling that way. You know? And I, I kind of, but, but, I kind of stopped feeling that way when I felt I was no longer part of it. And I didn't feel, you know, not only I wasn't the part of it, but, you know, you go around, you know, so they're looking at you all kind of sideways and stuff. And, you know, same people who've known you for six years, all of a sudden, I, I was like, I ain't got time for this mess. You know, you act kind of that kind of way, I'm going to feel that kind of way. If I feel that kind of way, I was like, you know, mm -mm. and one or other, another one reason why a lot of people go to church is because of the things that they're dealing with outside of church. And they figure if you go to church, maybe you'll have a better uh, outlook on life and maybe you'll have a, there's something about church that's special that makes you want to be part of it and makes you uh, feel the way that you normally wouldn't feel anywhere else, but you'll get that feeling there and that fellowship there and that love there and the support. I don't feel part of that. I don't see it. I don't feel that way. You know? I really don't. These are Sunday folks that go there on Sunday. I don't hear from most of the folks during the week. Not really. Not unless there's a death going on somewhere. And I don't wish that on anybody, but I'm just saying. That's the only time I hear from them during the week. Or whatever. We're not friends. And that's why I said fellowship to me is important. If I can't be if I can't be a part of that, if the fellowship to me ain't I'm not feeling that. If I'm not feeling that there's something beyond the church that keeps me wanting to go there, then why should I go there? I'm wasting my time. I am. Now, our pastor, associate pastor, a few weeks ago, was just talking about, you need to come to church. Yeah, he actually talked about that, about why you need to come to church. And he was talking about, well, you ain't going to get uh, church from just watching TV on the radio or whatever. You need to get the word from the church here. I, I have to agree to disagree. You can get church anywhere. You, you go to service on Sunday, but you can get church anywhere. You know? Now, church comes to you even on podcasts. I used to do the one every morning called Daily Audio Bible. I'm going to start back doing that. You know? Where well, this guy actually preaches the word from the book. Now, like I said before, women, there are more women functions in the church than there are men. They have a, uh, I, I it's an annual uh, function for women. They don't, the men don't even have this, but the women do. At least the ones I know about. It's a women, uh, it's, it's a women wives, uh, uh, what do they call that? Women wives, uh, Deacon this fellowship ministry, something, something like that. Something along that line. They do it in a war ceremony every year. Every year. A big, a big thing. They don't have nothing like that for men. At least none I know of. None at all. But like I said, the majority of the black church now is built around women. And Gus is doing the most, you know, contributions in it. Women. Because they built the organizations. There are organizations around women in the church. They don't have that kind of organization for men in the church. They really don't. Not the ones I've seen. Not the ones I've attended. You know? 
And then most around organizations were women and kids. But mainly women. I could name a five different uh, major organizations for women that doesn't involve directly with the, uh, well, at least three I know of for, for certain, that don't involve anything to do with men at all. Well, five for certain. But three I know that, that aren't involved in anything just with the uh, arts ring and uh, 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 singing the choir. The vast majority of the membership, 60% are women. 30% are men. That's a known fact. Number of churches have men's choirs. But guess what? They don't have the main men in the choirs. <laughs> you know. But the choirs, the, the other choirs, have predominantly women. You know. Yeah. That's another fact. But like I said. The women run the church. The women are, are what the, I, I find out more and more. The pastors, uh, you know, they're more supportive. They are. They're extremely more supportive than our of men's functions. You know, I noticed that. I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, yeah, they're more supportive of the women's function than our men's. You know, that's fact. That's that going to shame. You know, being an African American male, I would think that they would be just as supported, supportive of men's uh, functions and positions than they would women. They're not. I would always hope that they would be. But they're, again, they're not. They don't look at us the same. You know? They feel women, and it's the honest truth. They feel women are more of a commodity to the church than the men are. Because you know what? Women can tell the girlfriends, the girlfriends, girlfriends, the girlfriends, girlfriends that got the 10 kids, and they'll be because they can bring their members and their families, and that's how they do. And a lot of women will bring the men friends up there or boyfriends or husbands or whatever. You know? That's how it works. Women can bring more members or, or, or tend to bring more membership and mem uh, members there than, than the, the guys anyway. But, like I said, they have more organizations that cater towards women in the church. A lot more. You know? That, that kind of tend to turn the guys off. If you're not building men in the church, that itself is a problem. And it will continue to be a problem. Because, and that's the other thing. By the uh, Me Too movement, the Women's Lib, Me Too, which it really started, the Women's Lib movement in the 60s is what helped Pushed men out of uh, the black church. That's a known fact, people. It pushed men completely out of the black church. Because we're like, we're going to run this now. We're going to be digging this. We're going to be preachers. We're going to do this or that. So. The messages. I've talked about this before. In previous podcasts. Where the messages are catered towards empowering women. Mother's Day is one of them. Mother's Day and Easter. And I think on some respect, oh, Christmas. Those are the three of the bigger ones that I know for a fact. Oh, yeah, Valentine's Day. That's another one. That's four. Where they will always bring that message about empowering women. And believe this, get this, Father's Day too. The difference is, I have never actually heard 
pastor talk about fathers on Father's Day? Nope. Almost never heard him talk about it. But I did hear one we talked about women having a role of mother, father, or father's day. I've heard that. What does that tell you? They don't want men. Men aren't, aren't considered a factor in the, in, the, in the black church anymore. That's a fact. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. You know? And until pastors, that's both male and female, start building, when you bring men into the church and build and stop making it all about the women, at some point you will be able to build. But you also got to change the mindset of all of your members about building in the church. Because the building starts with the men in the church, not with the women. If you do it the other way around, you're going to have a problem. I don't care what anybody say. And the attitude's got to change. Because if you got men who are there and with the women and members that goes for both men and women start acting a little flaky around that man, 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 that man and men will start start dropping off the church like flies. They will stop start leaving. Because they don't feel there's much support. I've seen it happen. I've seen where pastors, associate pastors have been there maybe about a year or two and then they left. Because they don't see them building there anymore. Or maybe they just want opportunities to get there just to get their name out there and build their own church. That's how also happens as well. But the division is real. Like I said before, the attitude of black women in church has changed in the last 40, 45, 50 years. A lot. And not for the better. You know? Where the black church don't even talk about uh, kids should be abstaining from sex. They don't chastise women. And I've never heard it. And not, uh, I don't even recall it. But they don't chastise women for having multiple kids out of wedlock. I ain't never heard it. And you won't hear it either because that's their base. You're not going to talk your base out of it. I read it was an article. I, I I may have to do it on another podcast. There was an article I just read this morning about churches, particularly the modern day church, where financial uh, where they you know where people have stolen money out of the church. Many churches, many black churches, has happened, and a lot of times it, it goes unreported, where instead of them reported to the authorities or even in some cases reported to, to the members of the church the person who stole from them will make uh, they'll make arrangements with that person to pay it back oh yeah absolutely that's how they get out you know that way they don't lose their base because they find people who steal, steal money from church so oh okay then you know if we tell those guys they mean that trust us and in, in, you know in, with our, our finances and eventually hey we'll start losing money because people stop going because they ain't gonna you know, believe the money gonna go where it's supposed to go to now could you blame them if they did you know but like I said maybe I'll get back to it but I told my old lady I won't go back with the same you know, trying to speak to everybody for Sunday. I'm stopping that because let me tell you this, and I'm gonna get off here. Uh, a few Sundays ago, I always, you know, help out with the Sunday school. You know, people want to, you know, respond to different things and stuff, and we hold the mic and whatever, and you know, go to them, and you know. You got dirty looks, or some of the members don't want really to speak to you when you come past you in the morning. And a couple of them actually had their head turned the other way going past me. I'm like, really? And, I, and then there was a question where a young man had asked about, you know, what was the difference between uh, Christ raising from the dead and our body experience. He wanted to know if there was a difference. You know, Sunday school teacher couldn't even answer the question. 
They actually could not answer. Nor did the pastor. I thought it was I. But, hey, you know, although I thought it was odd, and maybe he should have known the difference at some point, it's the fact that they didn't even bother to try to, to talk to him about it in detail. Not really. So, I don't know. It was that and the fact that members who know me just came back and started this literally turning their head around as they, come by, as they went past me. What is this fellowship for if you're not about fellowship? And a couple of my who I actually spoke to these wouldn't even speak. You know, that's part of fellowship to me. <clears throat> and I told all that, if I ain't feeling that, I ain't dealing with it. Period. I won't anymore. I go back, but I won't, I'm telling you right now, don't expect me to be a jovial, friendly person I was more. I'm not gonna be nasty to you, but I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna be extra about it. Either. I ain't gonna go out of my way. I won't be extra about it no more. I'm done. I told you that. Real talk. Now if and when I go back, that's how it's gonna be. That's exactly how it's going to be. I won't be the friendly person I was there before. I mean, I won't be nasty to you, but I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm not going to stand all that extra welcome and all that like I used to. I'm not going to do it. I told you, point blank, I won't do it no more. And I meant that. I will not do it no more. But that's how I feel about it. All right, guys. Well, this is a live, uh, this has been a live uh, podcast of the fellowship in the black church. One of the reasons why I don't, uh, why I stopped recently going, and one of the reasons I may not ever go back. It's just the way I feel. You know? It's the way I feel about it. But nevertheless, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from going. I'm just saying my reason why I feel the way I do about it anymore. And why I continue to do so. Alright guys. This is DJ Wolf. That's all I got to say about it. When this. uh, Live podcast ends. Or when you finish listening to it. uh, On the playback. Leave a comment. Say what's on your mind. Good, bad or indifferent or whatever. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know. If you have any additional comments or any additional suggestions about uh, any future uh, podcasts or live broadcasts on YouTube, please drop a line. DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. That's DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com or DJ Wolf Live at Gmail.com. I can also be reached at DJ Wolf Live page on Facebook and DJ Wolf on Twitter. All right, guys. This is DJ Wolf. That's all I got. I'm out.